Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back. It is the middle of the day here in Cape Town. We aren't recording at night. Uh, probably the last episode that we might end up doing it this way because the fast is coming to a close. Uh, but yeah, how is everybody doing? Siad, it's been eons, bro. Yeah, I needed the daylight to come out. So uh, <laughs> glad to glad to be here again. And uh, looking forward to dropping some bombs on everyone. Especially with that FPL uh, experience we had in this uh, game week. Yeah, no. Nah. Looking forward to that. Riaz, how are you doing, bro? Less looking forward to the FPL talk, but, um, you know, uh, doing well. Happy to have uh, Zadie back on the podcast. It's been like... Uh, a good while. I feel like we should ask him an icebreaker at this point. But nah, man. <laughs> once I once I saw that you forgot to make your team, I thought this is perfect. I can leapfrog a few people in the league, and I can uh, make an appearance as well. And it's I thought really it was well. Arsenal is top of the league again. So you're trying to just like uh, <laughs> get your, your your five seconds of fame there while while yeah it's for like uh, 24 hours until Liverpool beat Sheffield like seven 0 or something tonight. Uh, make up that goal difference that is exactly. probably going to be a deciding factor or could be a deciding factor at the end of the season. Uh, but yeah, just like off the back of that now, um, there's been some some midweek games. Is uh, We obviously went uh, went through the, the games last weekend as well. Uh, have you guys been catching up with, with any of the games that's that's been happening last night and um, Tuesday night as well? Uh, Ziad, I can start with you. Yeah, I got a caught a bit of the Newcastle Everton game. I thought it was uh, was pretty entertaining. Um, I liked uh, Isaac's goal. Um, yeah, the way he fended off three defenders almost and got it through uh, to beat Pickford. Uh, but unlucky, I suppose, at the end to end up with a draw. They would have probably wanted more from that uh, the Newcastle guys. But Everton get the important point, which is valuable in the in the relegation battle. Um, and then last night, obviously caught a bit of the Arsenal game. Uh, fairly fairly routine. I think for me, I was uh, quite happy that they rotated the squad with the amount of games coming up. It was good to see some of the guys that haven't gotten a start in a long time. And 2 0 is a solid result. Um, but also what it did show us is that there's a reason these guys are not starting and they're squad players. Uh, it's because they're just a, a bit off the level of the, the best 11. But very... Very, um, how would I say, I was quite happy with uh, Emil Smith-Rowe's performance. It's quite promising. He can definitely play a, play a role going towards the, the back end of the season now. Party looks like he's still a bit rusty, um, but hopefully he grows into it as he goes along. It's good that we don't rely on him as much as we did in the past because that version of, of Party is not what, what Arsenal needs. But I mean, we've got Rice coming back in. So yeah, all, all going well until Liverpool take the lead again tonight. <laughs> it's it's interesting to note that um like with, with all the changes that were that were made for that Arsenal eleven, uh majority of the back line that spine was was still kept intact. Ben White, uh Saliba, Gabriel. I think it was only Kivio that, that went out and Zinch came came in. Um so I d I don't know what that says about the second sitting defenders or the second second sitting back line. Uh, that Arteta probably doesn't have as much trust in him, or the fact that he he doesn't want a chance uh, conceding silly goals uh, in such an important uh, title run. Yeah, I think they. I mean, who 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 are the backups? Kivio is supposed to cover centre back, but he's playing um, at left back all the time. Tommy Yasu probably um, could have started, but. I always feel like with defenders, you don't need to rotate as much. A settled defense is is much better. And, you know, Luton is a, a, a threat on attack. I mean, they've scored what before yesterday. They scored 18 games in a row. So if there was one team, even though you take it a bit lightly and you expect to win, but to keep that clean sheet, um, it's probably good to just keep that defense uh, intact. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. Riaz, uh, did you catch that game? Did you catch any of the other games? Um, anything that you might have seen in the Arsenal in that Arsenal fixture that we haven't touched on? Yeah, let's start with the, let's start with the Newcastle game. I just want to say, like, 
that it was actually ridiculous that that it was unfortunate and ridiculous that they they considered that penalty. It was a silly penalty to give away, especially at the time of the game. Um, and from the most experienced player that they have, I mean, he basically wrestled actually on the floor. He gave him a nickel, um, and if that's even a band in rugby, so it was a ridiculous kind of uh, a tackle there from from Paul Diamond, and it was a justified penalty. So um, Everton got away with one there because Newcastle were kind of playing really really well, and then um, giving that penalty away was shocking from them. Uh, and that's kind of happening them now in their chase for for European football. But like like I said, in in on the reverse side of things, Everton now needed that point, and it's gonna it's gonna help them to for the relegation battle. Especially and as well as uh, Nottingham Forest, they beating Fulham. Fulham are such a strange team. I don't understand. Yeah. Um, they do really well some some games, and then other games they do really badly. They got beaten three 0 last week. They got beaten three one this week. Um, doesn't make any sense, but okay. Um, they beat us 3-0, they beat United, but 3-2, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then the Arsenal game, yeah, it was really good. Uh, I think the party situation where he, he kept trying to pass backwards and sideways was annoying me a lot because um, I'm so used to watching Rice and Jorginho spray passes all over the field. But um, he hasn't played most of the season, so we have to forgive him for that. He'll get better as he plays more. I mean, the, 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 remembering the party at, at, at Atletico, he only used to pass forward. He used to get to the gap. He used to get to, he was hard forward passes to the forwards, straight into their feet. He used to wrap it into their feet. So, um, he, you know, the potential is there and um, he just hasn't played so much. But it's uh, it's really good that they're giving the, the squad a, a bit of a, uh, some play time because just to see what they can do. It was still a comfortable 2 0 win, even though it was a squad play, like the, the B team, I guess. A comfortable 2 0 win. Um, and yeah, Everett's still doing what he needs to do. Um, <laughs> it's good to see. I really like him. Um, giving Zinchenko some run outs because Kiwi, for me, is a, is, a, is now a better left back for some reason. Yeah. Or not a better left back, but he's, a, he's safe. I think he's, more complete. he's more safe. He's more safe, is the right and... word. Yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 he's safer there in the back four. Um, even though Zinchenko is, he's not, he's not, I'm not saying Zinchenko is bad, but uh, I, at the moment, Kiwi is, is a safe bet. Zinchenko then, just gives you that, that there's that one moment where he's going to maybe do a loose pass or, uh, or yeah. get beaten on the outside. And, you know, just Kiwi just seems more composed in those situations. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we're creating enough from other areas of the field. So yeah. you then prefer having a, a, a more solid left back presence than needing Zinchenko to to um, push the ball forward, you know, because we've got Rice to do that, Jorginho and so on. Yeah, and like, I mean, we've seen so often when Zinchenko goes into that inverted role, like he he gets pulled into that, that midfield too much and his tracking back isn't as good as Kivio because Kivio does the same thing, but you can see he has that alertness, like awareness to, to know when to go back and when to actually stay. Whereas Zinchenko, I think he... He enjoys the, the 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 attacking play and the fact that he's pushing up the field a lot. So you forget sometimes that oh, okay, I actually do need to track back. And I think that's why, like you mentioned, safe and that's that's probably yeah, why. Yeah, like la- last night he's shielding the the attacker from the ball. And between him and Gabriel, I don't know what they were thinking, but they both didn't clear the ball, go for the ball properly. Yeah. Gabriel apologized afterwards, saying it was his his fault. But I think he was just taking one for the team there. Because <laughs> yeah, Zinchenko, he just adds that little bit of confusion. And I think the biggest difference is he doesn't have Granite to cover for him. Because yeah. Granite is taking Leverkusen all the way. So uh yeah, I think if, if Granite was there, then Zinchenko works better. But the Rice and Kivio partnership seems to be a bit uh, better for, for the way the team's set up now. And I, th- I yeah. think also like the the I think I would like to see actually Sinjenko play as an out and out team like next to yeah. Rice instead of Jorginho at one point like play Kiwi at left back and play Sinjenko next to Rice as a team in one of the games just yeah. for interest sake to see how it would work. Um, Since we're on this, I also wouldn't mind seeing Ben White get that run in midfield just just to see what it looks yeah. like, man. I've always thought Ben White could sit next to to one of the other midfielders there in a 
in a double pivot, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But then you need Timber to come back. Yeah, first. Timber's coming. Timber's coming. <laughs> Timber's going to play in the in the Champions League. He's just going right, to appear, right. uh, make his right first now appearance you can just in the Champions Tommy League. At, at right back instead. Yeah. Well, Ben well, White just gets the options, freedom of midfield. Which you couldn't yeah. say before. Like yes, we used to yeah. drop off our reserve right back was Cedric and Carl Jenkins. Sure, yeah. <laughs> we, we're in a, a better position right now. Rob Holding. The guy oh, can't I even get a, get a He's look a in legend, at Palace man. anymore. Is, is he like um, a new Bentner? Is that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> now we uh, have some good... Just, mo- sorry, is that? Now so we have some good players there. Mavropanos put on a, a good display against the mighty Spurs the other day. Keep them to one goal. So uh, I wouldn't say like mighty. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say um, a good performance. I mean, they sat in they sat in the box the whole time. Look Just... on on Spurs. Do you want Spurs to sign Timo Werner? Yeah, Timo. I like, Timo yeah, I, like Timo. The, I, I like the look of him so far. I like, and it's it's what sixteen k. I mean, sixteen mil, something like that. Small small change. Yeah, yeah um, but like, okay. I think he's being used in in the the correct way though. At Chelsea, they were playing him through the middle. Uh, yeah. Andrew's playing him off the left wing. And it seems like he's much more effective over there because of his pace. I think what, what works for him at Spurs is the way we play. So we, we don't always go down that side. In fact, we'll hardly go down the left. Um, but when we don't have the ball is when he's effective. So as soon as we lose the ball, he is so quick that he's on the defense. As soon as we lose the ball, he's, he's pressing. Um, and that's why I like him at the moment. Not really for his attacking uh, abilities, <laughs> um, because that's still uh, the truly still out on that one. But without the ball, I think he's very good. Um, his pressing is is very very fast, and um, he knows like wait, you can see him ushering Sonny around. Sonny doesn't need any ushering because he's just as fast. But um, you can see how, how good he works with the team without the ball, and that's yeah. the important thing for me. And he's not going to start every game. That's also important. He's not there to be the leading winger um, in the team because we have quite a bit of wingers and we're probably going to buy more wingers in, in the summer. So 16 more, whatever the case may be, I'll take him because he's shown enough so far. Um, and he, he, he arrives on the far post like he's supposed to. Um, yeah. He arrives on the far post like he's supposed to. It's only, he's only there for tap-ins. We're not there for, he's not there to score any amazing goals. Um, he's there for the cross along the six-yard box and for the tap-in. That's how and we, we saw that over the weekend, ball. right? Yeah. We saw how they and were trying to, like, it, it, it was either Brennan Johnson or Pedro Pardo playing that ball uh, around and him just running at the far post and it resulted in an own goal. And then they just tried to, like, hit that ball after ball after ball. And, and there were, like, a couple of tapping opportunities for him. There were more opportunities for the defenders to score own goals. Um, so I think that's... That passage of play, it's probably going to be used week in, week out until the end of the season. The problem with that is when we play against a low block like we did against West Ham, we can't score yeah. um, because there's no there's space to whip that ball in and around the back. Um, so and West Ham's defenders problem. are huge. Yeah. <laughs> Long, that's huge big guys. Um, so it, it was, that's why we couldn't score again. We couldn't score more than one goal because we struggled to get They literally just sat in, in the box and we, we tried our best, but we must still, we still have a lot to work on in terms of our attacking performances and our defense, I guess, because we never keep a clean sheet either. But it, it looks good so far. I'm happy. Um, we must just try and keep... Aston Villa lost as well last night, which was crucial. Yeah. Um, we knew that they were going to lose that one. So Yeah, what, what's the big... I, like, I didn't, there's a lot of I didn't think it was going to be that, that bad, though. Comments no, apparently what? they played quite well, like according to, to what I, I read. For the neutral, it was a good game, which is obviously just to throw some shade on Arsenal getting a point over there. But like if you're any team, most teams, I was listening to the captain of, of Luton. He was on Sky the other day, the one who had the heart uh, issue, Tom Lockyer, I yeah. think his name is. And you are saying like you you kind of write off the game against City at the Etihad because you don't expect to get anything out of it. And I'm pretty sure Villa did the same thing. Even though they are quite high up on the table, they didn't expect to get anything um, from the game. So they just went to go play and see what happens. And it just shows if you are going to open yourself up, yes, it's more entertaining, but you're going to lose 3-1, 4-1, and, you know, at the, at the top of the table, you can't afford that. So 
And yeah. Villa obviously left some players out. Again, yeah, everyone's under the same that. fixture crunch. You gotta rotate yeah. players. You you gotta keep your players fit for the games that you prioritize for points. If yeah. uh, if that makes sense, I don't think Villa did too much wrong, but you'll see them come out hard in the next couple of games. Yeah, but I mean, like the the changes that they made to their team it was basically out of their hands. I mean, Watkins he's injured. He would have made a difference last night. Emi Martin yeah. is in the post. That uh, his presence alone uh, counts as a lot for that team. And then uh, uh, the the one change that uh, Emery probably made was to like just maintain fitness and stuff uh, yeah. would be power Tories. And I I've said it before that I think he's the best defender. Um, but he was rested last night. Uh, so those are, are three big, big names that could have made a difference into into that scoreline. But yeah. yeah, it is what it is. And I mean, Phil Foden, he's, he's amazing, man. Like, uh, Pips called him the, the, the best youngster in the world right now. And I would probably say that he's like a top five footballer in the world at the moment. Phil Foden is the savior of FPL. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Uh, yes, did you catch any of the City game? I actually watched most of the City game um, last night. It was the game I watched the most, I suppose. And it was yeah, pretty open. It was a good game. Um, City kind of dominated a bit more than I, than I would have liked um, in terms of a neutral perspective, in terms of the game itself. Uh, Villa had good chances, but on the break more often than not. There was no John McKean again, as usual. Um, there was no um, Watkins, no Patores, no the list goes on, it seemed. But they still had play, they still had Diaby. Diaby did well. They still had uh, Douglas Louise, he always does well. But Phil Foden just, I don't even know where he was playing. It looked like he was first playing wide, then he was playing at 10, then he was playing as a striker. It was so weird because Haaland obviously didn't play. So. He just played all over the front because Doku. So I think initially he was playing at 10 because both Doku and Grilly started. So Doku played on the right, Grilly played on the left, and Foden played as a 10. And that's why he got into all of these positions in the middle and started affecting the game. And it was very difficult to try and keep a hand on him because Louise had um, Rodri to take care of, he had Foden to take care of, and he had who else played in the middle? Um, I can't remember, someone else. Plus, they, they had both Rico and um, Akanji stepping into the middle at different points in the, yep. in the game, which was crazy to see. So, just the fluidity of City is difficult for anybody to, to handle. And without McGinn, I think they struggled in the middle of the park. And Foden is just incredible there in, in with his creativity and his ability to find pockets. It's almost like De Bruyne has taught him, look, this is where you stand to find the to find the half space. This is where you stand. If you want to get the shot off, this is where you stand. And it's just the, with, with his pace and his uh, skill but level at this moment in time, he's, he's, he's crazy. Um, and he scored, how much, how much did he score? Three or four goals? Three goals. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, his, yeah. His close City control is like, phenomenal. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's good to see. And like that's, that's one of the, the highest compliments anybody can give him. I think Pep mentioned it about like three, three or four years ago. We said that like his his close control reminded him of Messi the first time that he saw Foden play and like um like just running with the ball and having his close control in training it reminded him of Messi and I mean that like I said it's one of the best compliments like Foden can get from a uh, elite manager. I have a question though. Where does he start in the England team? Uh, I I would I would start him on the left wing and then Cole Palmer. In the ten, but okay. Cole Palmer is not even like making it into that uh, England team. But that's because it's Gareth Southgate, Southgate. I feel like any other manager starts Cole Palmer immediately because he's. He, I think both him and Foden are two of the most informed English players in like whichever league English players are playing in. I don't think there are any and other Jude, English of players. Yeah, Jude, sorry, and Jude. Can't forget yeah. Billingham. Yeah. Hundred percent. You forget he's English, yeah, because he's so good, <laughs> and he like doesn't he play in be from another country. This Liga to La Liga. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Gareth Southgate is a great player. man, the next manager of United. So I think he's doing a great job with England, <laughs> and uh, I oh, definitely think. Yeah, he should, has something he to say about that. Join United. 
So this be funny if Southgate goes the out. They have to laugh. If he so wins, Gary O'Neill Gary O'Neill's going to give up a head coaching job to be his assistant. <laughs> Probably, oh, probably. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, we just wrapped up now with the results of the week. Uh, we can just have a, a quick FBL chat before we, we look forward to the Chelsea United preview. Uh, Riaz, how's your FBL been? Like, who, I think this should be the two of you guys, you know. <laughs> Since look, you have both overtaken me in the past couple of weeks. No, nah, look, you, you, you forgot that time. there was a game week, so you, you get a, a pass for that. Uh, yeah, and, I you did, know, I, I think an honorable, honorable mention should go to you for keeping Phil Foden on your bench. <laughs> look, at least <laughs> one you, you forgot play. to change your team, but the fact yeah. that he was on your bench in the in the first place is strange. Well, he only got one point against Arsenal or something like that, so it worked out. Yeah. So that, well, was, that was a good bench, bench, bench shit for me. I mean... At that I time, suppose. against the Arsenal game, but um, but yeah, you you're sitting you guys, on a you solid nine away. points, mate. But yeah, I think you'll yeah. you'll you'll get uh, maybe another thirty today with Salah. You'll probably I'm score three so. or four goals. I'm hoping so. Um, that's what that's the only thing that's going to save me, to be honest, mate. Yeah, but everyone has Salah as well. So how much does it actually? But, save I, you? but he's my captain, you know. So it might work <laughs> out. Hey, who's your captain, Salah? Luis Diaz. Oh, me also, Luis Diaz. He's both have Diaz and not Salah. Don't do it. Yeah. Both. yeah. yeah. I had so that makes it a bit more interesting. I capitalized on all, the, all those points as well. Our league leader has Salah as captain. So. That's okay. I'm not worried about the leader. I'll, I'll worry about that at a different time. How many, and uh, how many Jason, Jason also has Salah as captain. So. That's good. That means he can't catch me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I'm sure there was. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. That people are surprised that there was rotation. Like, yeah. Obviously, there was going to be a rotation. It was such a short turnaround. And with Champions League and stuff, teams are going to rotate. I didn't take Saka out because I didn't want to use more transfers and I didn't want to use my wild card yet. Obviously, you want to drop the wild card out on the the double game week that's coming up and set myself up for, for the stretch. But uh, and my bench sucks. So <laughs> now no relief coming from there. So full Foden, thank you wherever you are. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, we have about ten minutes or so left. Uh, we we have a, a team like I don't even know how to build this. Is it the the battle mm -hmm. of the of the, the mid table battle or the the battle for Conference League spot? Uh, United versus Chelsea or Chelsea versus United? Um, it, it is at the bridge if I'm not mistaken. Um, Riaz, what do you think is going to be happening in this game? How do you think both teams are going to be setting up? Because we know that like, both, both teams have had subpar seasons thus far. Chelsea spending a gajillion dollars uh, in transfers and United going hot, cold, hot, cold every game week. Um, so how, how do you think, where do you think this game is going to be won where do you think it's going to? Is it going to be a very mellow draw? Uh, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Just because you want a clip now from me, that's why. But okay, I accept that. Um, the clips are always good. The clips are always good. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that United have been playing. I think cold. Um, I think they've just played all mediocre, and they win. They, they they win. They don't they don't really get cold. They just. They just, they just stay lukewarm, they like room yeah, temperature. All the, time. all the time. And um, they just win all the time, somehow, some way. They play like crap, though, but <laughs> they they win the games. So that's the important yep. part. Chelsea, on the other hand, have, have had a shocking season. Um, we know that. But they've shown glimpses where they've played really, really well. So it depends, I guess, on what Chelsea is going to show up to how the game is going to go. Because I think that it's possible that Chelsea can beat United like 4-2, but it's also possible that United can beat Chelsea 3-0. So it depends on what Chelsea shows up for that to happen, I guess. And it's gonna, I think it's going to be one and lost in, in the way United come out as well. Because if United come out and they are going to treat Chelsea like they treat City or treat Chelsea like they treat Liverpool, um, okay, maybe they start use Liverpool because they didn't play like at the last time. So let's maybe use Arsenal. 
um, if they're going to treat Chelsea like they can play Arsenal and they sit back, then I don't see the point in that. I think it's going to be a game that's going to struggle for goals if that's the case, because both teams struggle to get the coherency and and the kind of fluidity to to go forward and score goals, um, especially when the other team doesn't really um, attack a lot. Like they, they, both teams need counter-attacking opportunities to kind of make that chances um, for themselves. So it's going to be interesting to see as and oh, as well as the mid midfield battle because if he plays Manu, Scott McTominay, and Bruno as a middle three, I think there's still something missing there. I think that Manu by himself is it's a bit difficult for him to hold that midfield together because Scott is actually a number nine. Let's, let's be real, and um, it's going to be yeah difficult against especially against players who are amazing in like Enzo um, Gallagher is having a good season, and yeah. who's the other one? Casado, who's I've had he's the definition of what I called. So. It's going to be, but the, the potential of those three are great. And then obviously Cole Palmer, we, who's doesn't matter what's behind him, next to him or in front of him, he'll score his goals and he'll assist his goals no matter what the teams. I think he's been one of the best players of the season so far in any of the teams um, because for him to be carrying that team solely on his own, no matter what happens, is at the, his age is insane. So I think it's going to be I hesitate to say it's going to be a good game because both teams have the potential to play really, really badly. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting, I guess, to say the least. Um, hopefully, we get some goals as a neutral. Hopefully, we get some goals. And that's all I can ask for, actually, to be honest, because I, yeah. the both teams are shocking. Yeah. So, yeah, um, we saw the, the mindset that Chelsea went in against both uh, games against City this this season, both home and away. Uh, they frustrated City. They actually played well. Raheem Sterling probably had his two best performances as a Chelsea player in both of those games. Do you think that they can basically just try to apply that mindset to tonight's game? Do you think they will do that? Or do you think they'll just sit back and try to let United attack them and maybe try to get United on the counter? Uh, what do you think they're going to be trying to do in the uh, game plan? I don't even think they know. Pochettino is too busy crying about everything. <laughs> He's always got a problem. Um, you know, saying they need more time. How much more time do you need, man? And you've got so many different players. But uh, I think it's just going to be a chaos. I don't think Chelsea is going to respect United as they as they respect City. And United is not going to respect Chelsea either. They both look at it as a game they can win. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be goals galore because both teams defending is not their strong suit. So I think there's just going to be a lot of attacking. And if, if Cole Palmer is let loose, he's going to create space and open the game up. And United can counter because they, they do fairly well on the counter. Uh, so too Chelsea. So you're going to just see the ball going up and down the field. Um, goals galore. Um, um, that That's what I think. I mean... I wouldn't be surprised if there's, what, six or seven goals altogether in this game. I can't tell you who, who I think is going to win because it's a, it's a toss-up, really. <laughs> it's a, a literal coin toss, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if the aggregate is about six, seven goals. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the to the predictions just before we finish up. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, like Jason did on the last episode for our preview, like I've just done a combined 11 for United and, and Chelsea. So in goal, were well, you uh, able to come up with basically... eleven players? <laughs> yeah, it was tough. It was tough, eh? Sure. It's not like um, in who to put in. It's like, how do I actually put this guy in? Been, it's like choosing the best worst. of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is based on the entire season, everybody's performances uh, okay. across the season. So, so um, how they played this season? Yeah, this season. Yeah. Okay. Got so, you. Um, I've got Anana in goal. Um, and then See, I have Dilo that's exactly at right what back. I mean. Right? The best of the worst. Exactly. I have Dilo at right back, and then I have Dezasi and Varan as my centre backs, and then Kukurela Isn't Varane as concussed? No, he's not. Uh, that was just poor reporting from TNT Sports. Oh, um, okay. What Varan actually says is that he pulled out of con- of games during the season because of concussion. 
but they okay. uh, drafted the tweet um, to make it sound that he's pulled out of games until the end of the season. So, yeah, poor reporting from TNT. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, but Ryan is still available until the end of the season. Um, yeah, at left back, I have Tukurela because I don't think Luke Shaw or Ben Shilwell have played enough games this season to warrant uh, a place in, in the squad. And then in midfield, I have Enzo and Gallagher uh, basically at the base and then Bruno or Bataya. Uh, and then Palmer, Conacho and Hoyland up front. Yo, what how do you, you leave out think? Mainu? He, isn't he like the, the best thing. player in the world at the moment? Yeah, no chance. <laughs> so you're not no buying chance. that. Yeah. You're not what on the mean? train. Because the he's, way he's, everyone's, ah, Kobe yeah, Mino, he should quality. be playing in the World he's 11. Quality. Madrid's going to uh, buy him as soon as they can. <laughs> Kobe Mino, he's only started playing like he missed like the first three or four months of the season. So no chance he makes it into, into a combined oh, no, 11. I mean, for, uh, just a, it seems to be God's gift to football at the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, a coverage, it's so right? Like it's so sensationalized. Like honestly, good player, obviously, has a future. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years if he's one of the best midfielders around. But I mean, the guy literally just came two games he's in and people are like crowning him as England savior. Yeah, so but the, that's the world I don't know if you saw now. that clip of Ian Wright as well. Um, we Manu was left out of the England squad initially. Uh, and he was just going bonkers in the studio. He was like, "How? How has he left him out? How is?" And he's but asking that, Rookin, and Rookin doesn't care, right? Because I think in the past, and I know we're short on time, so I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as I can. But in the past, the international teams were a reward for playing well in the league. So you used to pick the team on form. What yeah. we found as the the game has become more professional, and coaches have become more rigid in terms of their structure and system, and there's more pressure on a coach to succeed. They don't pick as much uh, in terms of form. They pick system players. So yeah, yeah. They, each coach will have their go-to players for their system rather than picking players on form. Because, I mean, Southgate has a system. And if the players on form mean he must change his system, he's not going to change it. Whereas in the past, the national team used to be a reward for for good performances so i mean you can understand where those guys are coming from but uh, the way the game is now form you might find in a squad of 23 two guys get rewarded for form the rest of the guys are all system yeah. players yeah so true right but you right you can do nothing the... wrong i eh? just uh disclaim <laughs> over there. i love that guy um but yeah just uh like on on that combined 11 is there anybody that you would change like I know it's the 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 offering. Where's Rashford? Really you prefer Rashford no over Gonzalo? One hundred percent, no chance, no chance. Like <laughs> I'm not even going to tell. I honestly don't even know who that. plays for Chelsea anymore. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I would make a change. I would put Dello on the left, and I'd put Malagusta on the right because I don't think Kukurela deserves to be in there. He's played like two games a season, and even in the two games, he's been shocking. Um, Chilwell also hasn't played many games and neither has Luke Shaw so I think the player who's played the most on the left is Dello actually um, so maybe change the formation go with three oh, at the oh, back you see you can <laughs> now, squeeze now really Mino in the base yeah. of the midfield there yeah. I would also play Mino actually um, I would last Bruno out of the team and I would play Mino in the middle with uh, nah, Bruno has the captain's armband you can't get rid of yes, him I'll never who else is oh, going yeah, to bro. fall and cry? You need you need that designated player to fall and cry and try to argue with the referee for Sterling about 10 minutes. Sterling actually cries nicely. Yeah, yeah but he's not going to get anywhere. Especially the way he runs. <laughs> we, uh, we'll put Maguire uh, on the bench to cry. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, before we before we uh, wrap this one up, uh, just predictions for tonight's game. Uh, Ziad, start with four, you. 4-3, but I don't know who's scoring 4 and who's scoring 3. <laughs> <laughs> Riaz, I hope it's four three, and that's a good shot. Like I said, I also think it's going to be, a, or it can be, like a goal fiesta. But I'm going to go boring. I'm going to go no. Actually, I'm going to go. I'm going to go one 0 Chelsea. One 0 Chelsea. Four, um, four three Chelsea for me. Do it for Inzi. <laughs> okay, if you're going to go Chelsea, I have to go United. So I'll go one 0 United then. Thank uh, to say I'm, that, I'm going go to one United, United, and I hope. That's not going to like shoot me in the foot or anything. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm being optimistic for once on the podcast. Uh, Riaz, don't ever say that I'm not optimistic. Look, uh, when he chose to yeah. be optimistic when they play Chelsea. <laughs> no, no, that's Chelsea why, that's why I feel like I have to be optimistic. And Chelsea away. Chelsea away. Yeah. But okay, oh, that goodness. is all that we have today. Uh, thanks, you guys, for, for coming through. Siad, thanks for, for, for coming on the podcast for the first time in, I think it's been, what, eight months. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great to have you back. We'll see you in another eight months. Um, yeah, it's always good. Uh, but yeah, Siad, we can the Oaks catch you on the socials if they want to chat to you about Yo, football, actually, baseball, to... basketball, anything. I need to learn from you, AF. I need to get my name uniform across all the platforms. But yeah, I'm on X, on threads, um, Instagram, dropping comments now and then. But uh, yeah, usually most easily engageable on the, the X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, platform. Cool. Diaz? Um... Uh, yeah, follow follow Sportycast, you know, as I always say, follow Sportycast. Um, you can chat to us there. We talk a lot of stuff there, or, I, or they talk a lot of stuff there. Um, I'm on X at Parker underscore Riaz and on Instagram at Riaz Parker 7 if you really do want to. Um, but um, hardly active, but I'll try and be more if, active, if, I guess. If anyone does want to contact Riaz, just drop me a message. I'll give you his WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Riaz will probably be active for the next few days because it's WrestleMania and we recorded some WrestleMania content uh, over the last like day or so. So both of those episodes are up on the Sportycast YouTube channel. Uh, so give that a watch, give that a like, uh, give that, uh, drop your comments on there of who you predict will win all the championships and win all the matches. And um, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Uh, Riaz and I are both going to be like, very much invested uh but yeah uh guys if on... you if you can compare united and chelsea to uh upcoming wrestlemania match which one is it the, one of the toilet um, break matches <laughs> yeah probably the pride versus the final testament that's a good I... one yeah that's a, that's a good one that's, that's a good that's, one that's probably See, the best comparison See, that was actually the one one of the people that get me into wrestling when i was a small little baby boy so it's his fault that we actually you know, oh, nice. Now, I guess. Oh, could have, could have had you on the, on the PC. <laughs> With Doink the Clown and Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> Yo, throwbacks, throwbacks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway. follow us at Sportycast on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on threads, uh, any social platform. We have the same handle. So yeah, come interact with us. Um, we are very much active now. Our account is very much active now. Thanks to Ziad. Uh, he's been running with that. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be great. Um, and I'm AF Parker 642 on all social platforms as well. Uh, I'm also going to be tweeting a lot about wrestling, WrestleMania in the next few days. Um, still going to throw out my football tweets as well. And hopeful that the, the Warriors are going to make the, the plane in the NBA. Uh, games ahead as well but yeah uh, that's all from us and we'll see you next week probably yeah peace <laughs>